So when we got to Sugar, we were there only for three and a half weeks. So we didn't have much time and we had to get right down to work. So the way we divided our tasks was that uh, Iptasam was primarily responsible for the uh, for architectural detailing, for working with construction workers. While I, on the other hand, uh, I was working with um, the community members, I was working with students, I was working with teachers, I was working with various activities with the students, at the same time helping at the Sam uh, with architectural details. And both of us sort of, you know, always um, participated in discussion about finalizing the plans, finalizing the design. Uh, but let me tell you that, you know, the designs were very much, um, you know, I mean, the students participated in the design, in the design sort of process, and it is their design at the end of the day. So really, Working on site in the morning from 7 o'clock, um, 8 o'clock to like 8 p.m., coming home late at night, and then working in the office, getting office work done, and then going to bed, and again, you know, the same drill the next day. But it was, it was a low day, it was an intense trip. Well, when we got there initially, what we witnessed was a barren piece of land. So our first exercise with the students was we had asked each and every student to sort of draw their version of the garden, what they would like in a teaching garden. Then after that exercise was done, then we divided the entire student body into nine various groups. And each group had a leader. Each group cho chose their own name. For example, you know, group Chambeli or group Chinar or group Apricot. They had to choose a name that was related to the garden. And then after all their drawings to, came together, each group was asked, uh, we, divided the entire, we divided the entire site into a 25 feet by 25 feet grid. And then each group was asked to operate within a square. And uh, the results were astonishing, they were fantastic. Uh, all sorts of, I mean, there was an amalgamation of ideas. The entire site came to be like a bohemian installation with all sorts of interesting things protruding out, uh, chalk, chalk shapes on, uh, on ground. So that was very fascinating. I mean, if you could just leave the entire garden like that, um, it in itself would sort of provide itself as an art piece. So then, you know, we studied those designs thoroughly, if the Sam and myself, and then we said, you know, what could be included? I mean, this is their garden. This is not our garden. This is their garden. This is their design. And, uh, you know, we saw traces of a cricket pitch. We saw traces of a pond. We saw traces of uh, all sorts of interesting organic pathways of channels. and. Um, these are design elements that the children have, that the students, I must say, have contributed themselves, and they're very much part of uh, the design now. And after that, we took a bit of a digression. You know, we asked the students to do some architectural work. We asked them to uh, to design bird boxes for the garden, and the results, once again, I mean, were extremely, you know, fascinating, if one may say so. I mean, they designed these beautiful bird boxes out of wood, and then they, you know, some made their bird boxes out of shark. Uh, which is basically traditional, um, a traditional Balti way of uh, a building. We all proceeded towards working towards the final show and tell. So we had students prepare each each group prepare um, various kits. Each group was given a topic like you know um, pollination or like the water cycle, and they had to use means in the garden um, to sort of put together a skit which they would finally present. So I was, you know, primarily involved with various activities with the students, while Iptasam uh, would be able to sort of amalgamate all this information that the students had provided to her um, on ground. And then, you know, we had come together with um, a final design plan, which then the students then actually also um, imprinted on the ground. So each group was divided, was given a various area in the garden, and then they had to take curb stones and sort of lay them out on the ground. So the ground, as of now, as we speak right now, actually has the entire naksha on it, uh, which has been done by the students themselves. So when you go to the garden right now, you'll see the entire naksha. You'll see where the sundial is, you'll see where the pond is, you'll see where the rock climbing area is, you'll see where the apple orchard is, you'll see where the cricket pitch is, you'll see where the rainwater garden is. So all these elements have been imprinted on the ground by the students themselves. The garden primarily has, it has, um, it has a stage which will be used uh, to perform uh, skits. Um, I mean, Akbar ki kahani ho gai, aapne history mein jo para hai, usko aap stage pe kaise implement karte hai? How do you understand that? You know, um, stories from literature, how do you understand those? The garden has a cricket pitch because all the boys in the school requested a cricket pitch. Uh, it has a badminton court at the far end. Um, so that's sort of the recreational bit. Then it has, it has sort of this entire section that's called the kitchen garden area. Um, that's where, you know, uh, it'll have sort of a greenhouse, it'll have um, 
um, a kitchen um, that you know the students will use to cook um, you know, various products and then you know because the road after the school leads to K2 there'll be various tourists that'll be passing by and uh, I think it's always nice I mean for a tourist to stop by and sort of you know buy uh, an apple pie that has been sort of cooked by uh, baked by local by the school students of the Abrosi school so that's the purpose of the kitchen and then you have then you have you know all sorts of plants for the for the study of botany and biology um, you have a sundial uh, for the study of the sun and sort of the north south east and west you have a pond uh, for the study of sort of water and fish and you know aquatic uh, aquatic animals then you have uh, there's an entire section um, you know there's a rock climbing section so i mean students from all over pakistan can come in for a rock climbing um, you know competition if one may say so there's that and there's the apple orchard uh, there are reading spaces um, so, and then there's the solar system. So there are various sections of the garden that can be used for both for recreation and for learning. And uh, we didn't just want to put together a teaching garden or a recreational garden, but rather a mix of two. Uh, so the students can enjoy their learning in the garden. It becomes, it becomes an, a sort of an open laboratory, if one may say so, like an outdoor classroom uh, where you learn by doing. And that's the primary concept of, of the project. People primarily come to Sugar to see the Sugar Fort or venture out to K2, but I think what people don't realize is that there's, more, there's a lot more to Sugar, you know. You have to get to know the local Sugaries, you have to sort of really venture out into the local hamlets and villages. There's so much to see, there's so much to know. And just sort of, you know, just talk to the Sugaries. I mean, they're just so, they have so much to share, they have so many folk stories. And the Sugaries at heart, um, as Auntie Tahir would say, they're primarily poets. I mean. All the time, you'd be hearing all sorts of knots and hums, and I mean, they're just so poetic in their in in their conversations. I mean, they know their Iqbal, they know their Ghalib, they know their Fez. Um, uh, they love nature. They're always surrounded by nature. I mean, uh, to I mean, to a certain extent, they take their mountains for granted. Um, I don't think they'd ever be able to live in the city because I think. It's kind of fantastic that they're surrounded. It's like heaven on earth. You're surrounded by paradise. What more do you want? The only reason why I love this project so much, because I do think that it's unique in its own way. It has so much potential, so, so, so much potential. And only because the students and the teachers and the community members themselves are so excited about the project. If they were not that excited, you know, we would come, we would do this project because we thought it was great and we would leave. But it's not about that. It's because they, the students themselves find this project very exciting. I think it's, 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 it's the first kind of project, first of its kind in Pakistan. And, um, and inshallah, once it does blossom into something great, I think it will do wonders for the young of Shigar. And once this pilot project is complete and is successful, and if we implement the scheme somewhere else, I hope that this notion of a teaching garden will do wonders for the young of Pakistan because it is a new way of learning. It's a way of sort of being connected to the environment, to, to the natural world around you. And what's a, I mean, what, what's, a, what's a better way of learning? Why not?